Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corley from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're going to be talking about our friend, the Nintendo DS, and specifically a new flash card for it called the Easy Flash Parallel. Before we do that, though, if you guys could do me a favor, please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you've never done that before, as well as check out all my social media stuff in the description. I've got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, Spreadshirt, Travel Channel. I appreciate the support on all those platforms. Thank you so much. Let's get into it. So yes, the Nintendo DS. Believe it or not, this system is just about 20 years old. Yeah, you're gonna start feeling old. It gets worse, dude. 2004, the system came out. It's 2024 now. Granted, November. So, you know, a few more months before it actually is 20, but yeah. So, specifically, though, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about flashcards. Um, now, full shout out here, uh, or full disclosure on this, and a shout out to Senko Games. They were cool enough to uh, contact me and send us in for review purposes, so for free. So, full disclosure on that. Thank you again to Senko Games. And if you want to pick this up, there will be a link in the description so you can pick that up there. They have this and they have a few other things, similar flashcards and so on and so forth that look pretty good. Although I haven't reviewed those specifically, but they are there if you want to check them out. But yes, so they sent me this, the Easy Flash Parallel for the Nintendo DS. Uh, now, Here's the thing. Not that long ago, I actually did a video very similar to this on the R4, which a lot of people got some serious nostalgia berries over because I was presenting it not so much like it was a new thing, but hey, it was new to me. <laughs> and a bunch of people were like, wow, I went to high school and I used to use those things all the time. So a lot of, you know, people remembering that stuff. I wasn't expecting to be doing another video on the DS and a very similar concept so quickly, but here is the concept in a nutshell. You have a singular cartridge like this and you put a micro SD card in it. On that micro SD card, you put a few different files specifically for the card, as well as a folder full of ROMs that you likely got by setting high, you know, setting sale on the high seas of the internet, and you put those uh, ROM files in the cartridge. And then from this one cartridge, you can play effectively just about every single game ever made for that particular system. Not a new concept. Flashcards, we've been, you know, talking about them forever for various systems. The gold standards would be things like the EverDrive line from Crix. But yes, the R4 was a very, was basically that idea, but it's a much older version of that same idea. But that said, it is still produced. You can still get these relatively cheaply and easily, but it's just kind of, it, it's a product of what it feels like, which is just kind of a cheap mass produced Chinese kind of low grade product. It works, but can they do better? So that's where the Easy Flash Parallel comes in. Now the Easy Flash Parallel, uh, full disclosure on this, I mean I think really what we all want to talk about is what is the difference between this and the R4. And at this point in time, at the time I record this, there's not a whole lot of practical difference. So let me go over the things that are different, but I have to admit they're kind of minor at this point. Build quality, physical build quality of the Easy Flash card does seem to be better. It's a transparent case. The plastic is thicker. It doesn't like creak and like cave in almost when I press on it like the R4 does. This is very hard resistant plastic, so that's good. The board is a completely new board. There's other videos that have actually broken down like the insides of the boards. You can find photos of it online. Um, the R4s are very cheaply produced, mass produced cards. Uh, and I forget the name for it, but they have that like little plastic or little blob of stuff that goes over a certain part of it so that you can't necessarily reverse engineer it and whatever. And if they stole parts, you can't tell. It's a whole different thing. But anyway, it's just kind of low grade in that sense. Functional, low grade. Whereas this is a completely new design board where in that same spot, rather than having you know, a little plastic blob, they've actually put an FPGA in there. And that's probably the most interesting difference. Um, which we'll get back to in a split second, but they also changed the placement of the SD card, which in practical terms has no real impact, other than when you have the cartridge in the system, uh, you won't see the SD card, which makes it look more flush and potentially nicer, but that's just an aesthetics thing. In practice of why they did that, probably just better way of fitting it there, but yeah, from user standpoint, doesn't have much of a difference other than aesthetics. So the FPGA, that's the biggest difference because the FPGA is updatable. Um, it's basically a uh, hardware that allows it to emulate other hardware, whereas the R4 card does not have that, which basically means there's potential there. You can make it hypothetically have all kinds of new features and additions that I'm not sure what they would do, but you could do them. Whereas the R4 really can't change because of it the way it is. But that said, at the time I'm recording this video, they haven't really done anything else with that FPGA yet. But again, this product just came out. They are doing active firmware updates for it. At the time I record this, I think they're on 1.04. 
and this card has been updated with the latest so whenever you want to update it and add new features whatever they come up with that's basically the potential perk but again i must stress at this point in time in practical terms there's not a whole lot of difference between that and the r4 in its current state but they also, you know, you know, also make a big deal about the whole time bomb issue. So here's the thing. I didn't run into this personally with my R4, but part of the reason I guess they're stamped with a timestamp, like this one says 2021 on it, uh, isn't so much the year it came out. It has to do with what they call the time bomb issue, where a lot of R4s, not all of them, of course, only work for a certain amount of time before they stop functioning. Um, I, again, I can't speak to that with any individual, like, specific knowledge because that did not happen to me, but I guess it is a known thing. The Easy Flash simply does not have that, therefore it's far more future-proofed. Now, in practice, when you actually, you know, run the two of them, they function very, very similarly. Now, I'm no expert on the DS, like, piracy scene, if you really want to call it that. That's probably a grave injustice. I would say the DS independent scene, but whatever you want to call it. Um, the R4 used something, as I understand it, called wood, which basically meant when you run it, you see this little, like, card system come up, like a little menu, and it looks like a display of, like, wooden, you know, two-by-fours and stuff. That's just a background, but that's the name of the system they came up with. It's got its own special dashboard, essentially. For the Easy Flash, they developed their own specific one that you have to run on the Easy Flash by just throwing it onto the raw files when you first get it, which is no big deal. And but it operates very, very similarly. Um, so let's talk about prepping the card. So uh, I don't know the limits of the R4 card as far as compatibility. Officially, the Easy Flash will claim that it supports 32 gigabyte cards. Now it technically supports bigger cards. You could put in a 64 gigabyte card. It doesn't really matter. It would just have to be formatted to FAT32. But the asterisk with that is that officially they don't claim anything bigger than 32 gigabytes is supported, which means it's possible that if you make the cards bigger, while they will work, they might run into certain issues that are essentially unforeseen. Now, maybe with the FPGA in there, they can update that. I honestly don't know. But either way, it's, it is a thing to be aware of. Now, why does that matter? The Nintendo DS library it's in its entirety doesn't quite fit onto a 32 gigabyte card. It comes very close. Like you'd have to shave off just like a handful of sports games and pretty much the rest of it fits on there. So keep that in mind. If you do get a 32 gigabyte card, you can't technically get everything on there, but you can get really, really close to it. Just eliminate a few games you wouldn't want and you're pretty much good to go. Um, now, uh, I won't sit here and say 100% compatibility because I don't know that personally because I never tested it myself, but I would imagine most games work. Now, piracy was such a rampant problem when the DS was relevant because of things like the R4 card, the Nintendo started to get wise to it. And while they couldn't make games entirely just not function on them, they could kind of make them detect if they were on a piracy card and then they would run into certain issues. So if that was the case, you would need certain patches for them to function properly. Now with the Easy Flash, that's actually very simple. Um, so when you download the firmware for this thing, all you have to do, first you format the card to FAT32, and then you take all the root files and you throw them into the root of the SD card, no problem. Inside there, there's a folder called Cheats. Now the reason that matters isn't just for like, hey, GameShark benefits, if you want to call it that, which do work, by the way. Um, you can also, they'll also include the patches. So, for example, one game that I noticed had this was Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. So when you go to that game, I find it in like, you know, the directory of games, and you press like start on it, you'll get a whole bunch of options about copy file, move file, all this other stuff. Doesn't none of that matter. Just go down to file info, you click that, and one of the options you'll see pop up is cheats. Click on that, and inside you'll see that the first option is about a bug fix, basically. And then after that, it has a whole bunch of codes. Now, any game that has like a bug fix, you're going to want to run that, make sure that's functional, because that's going to patch the game to function properly off of the cartridge. It can still run, it just might run into other issues, so it's always good to have that. Now, to be fair, the R4 supports this as well. It's just the Easy Flash makes it slightly easier, because the files are kind of something you're supposed to have when you first set it up. Um, so keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, fundamentally, like I keep saying, there isn't a whole lot of practical difference in the two. 
it's more like one has a future for more options and one is just kind of what it's always been for like a decade plus, you know, if, if that makes any sense to you. Um, but yeah, so beyond that, there's not much else to say about setting the card up. Once you throw the files in there, you can set up folder structure however you like beyond what's required. So like if you want a games folder, you can put just DS games in there, or there are actually emulators that can run on the DS, that can run things like the NES, the Game Boy Color, the Sega Genesis, whatever. Those are very mixed, and I would consider them very much to be just bonus features, because the NES will run fine, the Sega Genesis runs decently, but things like the SNES and like Game Boy Advance are very hit and miss. Like some games will work fine, some will crash immediately, some the sound will be totally broken. I mean, you get it. Frame rate is terrible on it. I would just think of all of the emulators as just a bonus feature. Now again, because of the FPGA in this thing, it's possible that emulators in the future for the DS for this particular card might get way better, but I don't know that. That doesn't exist in, at this point in time in our reality, so I can't speak to it. Um, and another thing, and one kind of more significant note, the reason we have all these different models of the DS, the original, the DSi, um, the 2DS, the 3DS XL, is uh, a lot of the marketing for this thing will mention 3DS everywhere. Because it does work on the 3DS, but it doesn't play 3DS games. It's effectively a DS card that's backwards compatible with the 3DS. So yes, this one cartridge will work on any model here, but only think of it as a way to play original 2004 era Nintendo DS games. This does not play 3DS games, even on use of a 3DS. So keep that in mind. Um, so final thoughts on it. Would I recommend it? Do I think it's good? I think that it is a good product for what it sets out to be. I think it is a solid option for a Nintendo DS flash card. And if the R4 didn't exist at all, it would be the best thing ever. The R4's legitimate case against the Easy Flash is simply that the R4 is very, very cheap. I mean, I think you can get them off AliExpress for like a couple dollars. But, while this one isn't exactly ludicrously expensive, it can be anywhere from like $25, $35, something like that, it does have a future as long as they keep updating it. That FPGA in there does allow for potential for new features, and that's key. Build quality is certainly better, um, but beyond that, at this point in time, there is no other significant difference. Again, that may change and hopefully will. So ultimately, I would say you would probably would prefer to get the Easy Flash if you're really into the DS and you want to see what else you can make it do over time. The R4 is just kind of the McDonald's solution of doing it kind of cheap and it basically can play some of the games here and there, whatever. This one is more all-inclusive and has more functionality potentially. It makes certain elements of it easier, like the cheat codes and the patching system, etc. But as I said, the R4 is capable of that. It just requires a couple of extra steps. But there you go. Uh, so a huge shout out again to Senko Games for sending this my way. Thank you guys very much as always for watching. Again, links are in the description if you want to pick this up. Uh, thank you as always. If you guys could do me again a favor, please like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done it before, as well as check out all the social media stuff. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, Patreon, Spreadshirt, Travel Channel. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all later.